How's it going, church family? It's so good to see all of you today. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. We're so happy that you're here. If you are hopping on for the first time, if this is your first sermon ever at Bolingbroke Church, we're going through a sermon series, and this sermon series is called So Much More, and you're hopping in right in the middle of it. And So Much More is a series that we believe that God is calling us to, to go through because we believe that God is calling us to so much more. We, we have gone through so many stages here at Bolingbroke Church, so many stages of life in this church from a really explosive movement uh, in 2015. We saw some really awesome momentum two or three years ago, and we've seen us go through pandemics, and we're seeing us going through reopenings. And we want to thank you so much for coming on this ride with us, this journey of this church's life. And we want to let you know that this sermon series to let all of you know that God is asking to, asking us to go through so much more. That if we thought that we saw some exciting things in the past, God has so much more waiting for us. In fact, in the Bible, Paul, one of Jesus' like chief followers, and he became a follower after Jesus ascended. And he actually was on his mission of killing Christians. And Jesus changed his life into a person to now make Christians, to baptize new Christians, to disciple new Christians. And in one of his letters that he wrote in the Bible, in the New Testament, he wrote this letters and he says that God wants to do so much more that he sees things that we don't. In fact, he says, God wants to show us things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has comprehended. And he says the only way for us to see those things is if we submit to his spirit. And so I'm just so excited to see what God is going to be doing. And this sermon is to see what God wants us to do next. To see what this, what's the next level of so much more. And last week we went through um, an amazing story. And in that story, in, in, in last week's sermon, we, we understood that, that God is, is just calling us to be a trace in a space where we are. Esther, the story that we went through back in her time, she was a trace of God uh, in the space that she was in Medo-Persia, in, this town of, in the city of Susa. And in Esther's book, there's no mention of God's name, but in her actions, in Mordecai's actions, in all of their, the Israelites' actions, they showed traces of God where they are, in the spaces they are. And wherever space you're in right now, God is calling you to so much more. And today we find ourselves in the life of Paul as he goes through different cities to create churches. And we all have our idea of what church. When I say the word church, you have an idea in your mind what that looks like. And Paul understood this too. Paul understood that the people that he was going to had their own idea of what church looked like. And God has his own idea of what church looks like. And the, the problem is sometimes we don't always see eye to eye with God. <laughs> Even as a pastor, there are times where I look at my past, look where God has brought me through, and I say, that did not look like what I thought it was. If you were to ask me seven, eight years ago, no, no, no. If you were to ask me at 18 years old, that I would, if I, if you would believe that I would be a pastor, I would say you're crazy. No, no, no. I'll, I'm going to be a UFC fighter. I was really big into martial arts. I'm going to be a UFC fighter. I'm going to join the, the UFC. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a mixed martial artist. And then if you were to tell me that I'm going to be a pastor, I would say that I'm crazy. But now when I'm looking back at my life, I realize that God intended so much more for my life. And God has something so much more for your life too. And when we finally see eye to eye, when, when our lives and God's heart become in sync, we see church happen. Let, let me say that again. When our hearts and God's heart become synchronized, when we want the same things that God wants, He can truly say that His will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. That our lives become synced, our hearts become synced, and that is when church finally happens. So I really want to get into this, into this word, into this message, because there's a lot to say. So we find ourselves in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, sorry, chapter 3. And what Paul is doing, for those who are still getting acquainted with the Bible, and it's 
totally okay that you do uh, in the New Testament of the Bible, the latter half of the Bible. We see this guy named Paul who was an, a, a commissioned disciple of Christ going through all the churches in the area, going through all these cities and creating churches. One of the first churches he created was this church called Corinth. So the church in Corinth was occupied by a group of people named Corinthians. And it's very simple. And as Paul is preaching to these people, he lay, he, what he would do is he would go to the churches, set them up, and then he would come back and check on them. And then he'd write them letters and in, in a way of giving them guidance to where God wants to take them. And so we'll find ourselves in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll start in verse 7. Read with me. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. And this is the most amazing part. I want you guys to pay attention to this part, please. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. God's building. I want to read that one more time. For you are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. He's building. It's interesting in this verse here, it says that you are God's field. And he's talking about vineyards likely. And the idea of vineyards is he wants to grow. He wants to cultivate in this field. He wants to make things from what looks like dirt, from what looks like nothing, from whatever situation you find yourself in, you might find yourself in dirt. You might find yourself on a, a, a plateau, but God desires to grow you because God says you are his field that he is working on. He says you are his building. In the chat right now, I want you guys to type, God is building me. Type in the chat right now, say, God is building me. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that today that you build us. Whatever building, whatever space, whatever field that we are occupied in right now, I pray, Lord, through your spirit, you build your church. You build your church. You build your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So to give you guys some brief context to this chapter, there's, I kind of put you guys right in the middle of it. And I want to give you guys some, some, some background. And he starts off this chapter as kind of a rebuke. He calls, you know, he calls them brothers, but then he also calls them infants. And it, it was as to seem that he was talking to people who kind of just don't get it. <laughs> it's interesting, like, you know, a lot of us have grown up in church and we don't, things don't actually click in our heads until a lot later in our lives. Have mercy. That we might be surrounded by good things and still make bad decisions. Amen? That happens to all of us. That's the Christian life. That God is so patient with us in our growing and in our stagnation that He's willing to work with us wherever we are. And sometimes when it feels like God is nudging us, it's just to get us off the plateau into the valley or the pasture or the peaks that he's calling us to. So in verse one, he starts off like this, brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but worldly, mere infants. He's, he's calling them children. Now, I don't like to be thought of as a kid. And I know a lot of you that maybe you might find yourself in a, in a spiritual space where you feel like you know quite a bit, but there are things that even the people that are that are so knowledgeable in the Bible that can miss. And we could even be so high up that we forget the basics. We forget the fundamentals. And he's calling them to realize that they've missed something. That they, they, they've, they're forgetting to see things in a spiritual light. They're looking at things, what he says is worldly. Now, what, what's worldly? Let, let's keep reading. He says, verse 2, I gave you milk not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Have mercy. <laughs> it's really interesting that we always ask God to lead us. We always ask God to lead us, and we believe that God is a way maker. We sing that song over and over again. We ask God to be a way maker. <laughs> Paul says that you're not ready for it, actually. 
you're actually not ready for what the Holy Spirit will do. One of my mentors here in, in Illinois was telling me, we're talking about um, the gift of tongues, we're talking about gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I asked him, what do you think about the gift of tongues? And do you think that any Adventist would ever experience something like that? And the guy said, he says, I don't think that the Adventist church is ready for that yet. And I asked him why, because there's always something more with this guy. There's always something more that someone is trying to teach you. Someone of God is trying to teach you. And he says, the reason why we're not ready for it is because we're so unwilling to change. He says that we're so attached to the things that we own that we don't actually want to see the Lord change things because that means if the Holy Spirit really revives and reforms us, that we will look different than we first started. And a lot of times in our spiritual lives, we get so comfortable, we, we no longer want to create. We talked about this last week. We get so comfortable in our lives and in the things that we built, in the buildings that we find ourselves in, that we no longer want to see God change things because when he starts changing things, the so much more that he's leading you to actually becomes that you better stop. We actually might ask God to stop doing what he's doing because it makes us uncomfortable. It brings us out of our comfort zone and it forces us to be creative. God is calling his church not only just to have a place of pasture and streams of water, but also be creative and trust his presence even when we're going through valleys, even when we're going through periods of transition, even when we're going through paths of change, God is saying, trust my spirit to show you, say it with me, so much more. But Paul says here, you ain't ready. (laughs) He says, you're not ready. You are still worldly. I want us to take an examination of our spiritual lives right now and actually ask ourselves, are we willing to look incredibly different Because once we allow the Holy Spirit to take charge in our lives, we won't look the same. He says this, he explains what worldly looks like. For since there is jealousy and quarrel among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? I I want you guys to hear this, what Paul is saying. He says, you're acting like mere humans. God wants to bring us to a new level of humanity, to the realness of humanity, the way he always dreamed us to be. The way that we're living like right now is not the way God desires us to see. He wants to see humans become so, say it with me, much more. Listen to this. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos. Are you not mere men? So just to give you guys some context here. There are two people in this church. Paul comes and he starts the church. And then he he teaches them the the fundamentals of, of being dead to Christ and alive to Christ. To be dead to the law, alive in Christ. To be one with the Spirit. He talks all about this in chapters 1 and 2. And they understood this. He plants this seed. He plants this gospel. He plants this belief. These fundamentals. And then Apollo stays and he waters it, he says. He takes care of it. L- listen to this. After all, what is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you have come to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. You, you see, Paul was the person who started the church, while Apollos was the one that kept the church going. And now he comes back and he sees this division saying, I like, we think that it's only relegated to Corinthians. We think it's only relegated to the Bible. This would never happen in churches where I like the way uh, Pastor David preaches. I like the way he gives Bible study. No, I like the way Pastor Dave does things. No, no, no. I like the way Pastor Dave leads worship over Adrian. (laughs) That's That's a shout out to Adrian right there. Our worship leader. Hey, Adrian, sometimes people might like worship the way I do it. I don't know. But what happens is here in Corinthians, in the church of Corinth, Corinth, there is a division between leaders, ideologies. There's a division between how we want things to do, how we want things to happen. There's a division between what we want from church. And Paul says that's worldly. 
Because church is not about what I want. He says it's what God wants. We, we always see church as a place what... Church isn't Chipotle where you get to pick and choose what you want in it. No, no, no. Church is a place where God is growing. God is continually cultivating and you get to be along the ride. You get to be a part of the movement that God is doing. That's what church is. A, a lot of us, we, we have gone through different churches, gone through different avenues, and, and we find ourselves wondering, uh, where am I going to land in a church? And we finally find a church and we say, okay, this is now my church, and they better not change. But listen here, church. The word grow here is very particular. It means in Greek as progression. It's, it's spiritual progression. It, it's interesting that we always find ourselves attaching ourselves to different teams, I would say. It, Paul isn't not, not necessarily bashing on his church. He's not necessarily saying that you are, you are lost causes. He's, he's merely pointing out that human, the human condition of putting teams, putting ourselves into camps, tribes, different spaces we 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 pit ourselves against each other that's human nature in fact it's interesting paul is pointing out something that we all do we we all have a sport team and i never really got into football or or bat i mean i got into basketball a little bit and i was rooting for uh the bulls for a long time until you know things got a little shifty and i realized that i don't want to be a fair weather fan but one sport that did stick out to me was mixed martial arts and in mixed martial arts, I've been doing this since I was 17 years old, and I, I've loved it. I joined a gym uh, a f- several years back called Bang Muay Thai. Bang Muay Thai, it's a really awesome uh, system. It's a, it's a huge nationwide affiliation system of uh, kickboxing. And their headquarters is in Colorado, and they have affiliate gyms all across the nation. I became part of one. And one of their star fighters was this guy named T.J. Dillashaw. T.J. Dillashaw was the champion at the time. And when I joined the gym, that's, that's all we would study. We would study his movement, study the way he put things together. And this is the cool part. This is what I'm talking about. This is a little illustration for you all to, to understand what I'm saying. Is when, whenever he would fight and whenever he would get his hand raised, I would watch these fights. I would watch these, these, uh, the UFC events. And whenever he would fight, I would feel like that's my teammate. I would feel like, yo, that, that's, that's me. I, I want to celebrate when they celebrate. And when he got his hand raised, I raised my hands too. <laughs> I raised my hands like I won that fight. Because we put ourselves in these teams and it, we feel like when they win, we win. And so Paul finds the Corinthians doing the same thing. They, they find themselves putting themselves into teams, Team Apollos, or Team Paul, and Paul is saying, no, 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 no. I need you guys to be on God's team because we're all just servants, he says. He says, all of us are just doing what God has called us to do. I can only be faithful. Pastor David, Leslie, Adrian, we can only be faithful. Moses, we can only be faithful to whatever God is calling us to do because we're not on any team here other than Christ's team. Everyone type in the chat right now, I'm on Christ's team. Because listen to this. Listen to this. He says, verse 7, Neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. The, the team that you put yourself on, whether we should do this or with that in church, whether we should have this music or that music, it doesn't matter what you want because church is not what you want. Church is what God visions in our reality. What the church is, is a place where heaven and earth touch and God's presence is able to become real in the lives of people in this community through the Bolingbroke Church. We're we're not here to change the entire world. I hope by the grace of God, I can look back on my tenure here at Bolingbroke and say that Bolingbroke, the village, was made better because Bolingbroke, the church, he says this, neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow, makes things progress, makes things get cultivated, makes things into, say it with me, so much more. 
Verse 8, the man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and to each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. Here's some Greek for you all, since I love to give you guys Greek because I paid so much to learn it. The word Greek is a word that we're actually very familiar with if you like Greek yogurt. There's a Greek yogurt brand called Oikos, and Oikos means building. But it's not building as a noun, it's building as a verb. And the word building, oik, oikodome is the word that's used here, is building or edifying or spiritual, this is most important, the spiritual progression of not just an individual, but a group. It, it's speaking to both. It's speaking to both the individual as well as the group. I want you guys to listen to me here because this is how God speaks. Jesus said in, in, in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever, that's, that's the group, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. Sorry, that's the group. The world is the group and the whosoever is the individual. God speaks to not only the individual, he speaks to the group. God not only speaks to the group, he speaks to the individual. When he mentions church, he's not only speaking to your heart right now, he's speaking to the group that you are a part of or that you will be a part of. And when he says building, when he says you are his building, he's saying that he's actively cultivating your spiritual life. That, friends, is called discipleship. Discipleship is when I say that I am going to submit myself to the cultivating nature, the creative hand of God. The same hand that created the universe is the same hand that's forming you into the person that you are called to be. And whatever that is, I can tell you this. I'm not sure what it is. But whatever it is, it's so, say it with me, much more than what you think you are right now. Listen to this. Verse 10, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone who is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. That, that's, the, that's the building blocks. That's the foundation. He says, you build the foundation upon Jesus. But he doesn't stop there. Listen to what he says. If, see there's contingency there. Because he understands human nature. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. I, I, I want you guys to understand what's happening here. He says that the, the base foundation is Christ. And if anyone thinks that they can add to it, he says you're free to do so. He says you're, you're free to build upon that foundation if you want. To, to, to build on this foundation, to, to think you can add to it, to think you can add more to the foundation of the church other than Christ. He says you can use gold and silver and costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. He's saying, sure, you can make this more appealing. You can make this a bigger building. You can make this look a certain way. You can make church into Chipotle. Woo! You can pick and choose what you want in it. Go ahead, you could do that. But then he says this. If you do that, verse 13, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, the day he's talking about here is the, is the day of, of Jesus' second coming. Because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it's burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. What, what, what Paul is saying here is that if you try to make church your Chipotle, if you try to make church a place where you get to pick and choose what goes into it and, 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 and take out the foundation of the thing that is meant to make it grow, which is Jesus. If you think you can make church about what you want. So listen to this. The, the story of Mary 
in, in, in the Gospels, when she comes to Christ crying at his feet with tears, with tears she cries and she has enough tears to wet his feet which she dries with her hair. She's coming with absolute worship saying, this is all I have and all I have is just you, Jesus. She gives her perfume, he gives her tears. That I, I don't know what would cause someone to, to create tears. You can either be a great actor and make those fake tears if you could, or those are tears of someone that is in such a time and an experience of worship because of the forgiveness that she's experienced. Because she realizes her own nature of wanting to do her, things her way. Mary was a person that tried to do things her way. The Bible says that this woman was full of sin. But, but she says that I've tried things my way and they didn't work. The, Paul is saying you can try things your way. But at the end of the day, if the fire comes and things burn down, what comes out? What survives? And this woman, Mary, comes to the foot of Jesus and says, Lord, I, I have nothing left to give. I have nothing left to choose. I have no way of trying to figure out what my life is about, what my church, what my worship will be about. So here I am. Could you imagine, church, if all of our church just came to Jesus and, and every single time we got together, we're just saying, God, let your will be done, not mine. Because my will tried and, and my will is the reason why I'm at the foot of the cross. Paul says, go ahead and try it. Try to build church your way. It never lasts. Just like the fig leaves that Adam and Eve put on themselves as a way to, con to control the things that they, were, they, they wanted to, to, to use, to a way to control their lives, they, God knew that they would always have to go back to the fig leaves. What we choose, church, doesn't last. But God is asking us to build something that lasts. Something, say this with me, something so much more. Something that what Paul is saying here outlasts the fire. Outlasts the burning. Outlasts the, the fires of life. Last year we went through a fire. We went through a, a time where they said you cannot congregate in groups. But church, we never closed. The church never burned up. We lost the access to the building, but our hearts were still focused on God. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for a people that says if everything burns up, if everything falls down, if everything goes away, we still have the foundation of Jesus Christ. We still have our worship to the one true God. We still have each other. We still have each other. Listen to this. The, the one thing that this, this story brings me to is a story in the Old Testament in Daniel chapter 3 where three young men who were in a tyrannical government who were forced to worship another God said absolutely not. We won't make worship, we won't make our church about what we want or what the world wants. We will make it about what God wants. And the, the tyrant king of that time, Nebuchadnezzar, sent them to the fire, just like what Paul is talking about here. And listen to this, chapter 3 of Daniel. As, as they were approaching the fire, they say this to the king of that time, O Nebuchadnezzar, you, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. We do not need to defend ourselves. <laughs> there is this idea that, um, uh, th there is this idea that how do we defend a God that is all powerful? And there was this one theologian, he says that I do this, I, I, I defend God the same way I would defend a cage lion. I simply let him out of his cage. What if we actually let God out of the confines of what we want church to be and finally let him do what he's wanted to do with the church and that is grow it, that is cultivate it, that is to bring it, to say it with me church, so much more. Listen to this, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter for if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. 
and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. They had a belief that God's intention for their lives was good. And they said, God can and he will rescue us. And then this is what Paul is talking about. This is what real spiritual maturity looks like. He said, they say this, verse 18, the most amazing verse, I, I think, in, in, this, in this chapter. But even if he does not. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those three boys, understood that church was not about what they want. It's not about even what they think God wants. It's about what God wants. Because they understood that even if they die, even if their building, their bodies burn, God still has, say it with me, so much more in store for them. Listen to this. Listen to this. Going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? You are that building. I, I can imagine the Corinthians shaking the building and saying, hey, this, this looks good. This, this looks sturdy. But no, no, no. Paul says, no, no, no. Not that building. You yourselves are God's temple. And that God's spirit lives in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy them. For God's temple, listen to this, family, is sacred. And you are that temple. Jesus says, aren't we more than just flesh and blood? Aren't we more than just the clothes that we wear and the things that we choose? He says, you are a, listen to what he says, a sacred temple. You know what that translates to in the sermon series? God is saying you are so much more, listen to me, than a building. You're so much more than a field. You're so much more than what you think church is. God is preparing Bolingbrook Church to expand its borders, to expand its walls, to show it so much more. And he says you are that church wherever you are right now we might be displaced on a field in the towns in the city of chicago around the world but guess what if you're watching this right now god is calling you to be his sacred temple that from that temple outflows relief outflows security outflows protection and love and he's saying you are that church and even if they take, even if this building burns today, even if we lose that field, even if the stage that Adrian's singing on at 1230 goes in flames overnight, he says, there is still so much more that I could do if, be and the reason why there's so much more is because his spirit is within this building, not this building, this building. Not this temple, this temple. He says, if you allow my spirit to reside in your temple, I will show you, say it with me, family, so much more. God is asking. He's not trying to build buildings. He's trying to build faith. He's trying to build faith because faith is what comes out of fires. We can't take this building to heaven. We can't take that field to heaven. We can't take that stage to heaven. You know what will be in heaven though? All of us. Look to the person next to you. Look to the person next to you. Think about the people that are in this church right now. That is what Christ is after. That's what he says survives the fires of God. And he says, those things that come out of the fires are the things that will make it into heaven. Not buildings, not drums, not, not, not the, the praise and worship, not disciple town. But the people of those spaces are the things that will make it out of the fires into the heavens. Because God is not building buildings, he's building faiths. Because faith, with faith, with faith, listen to me, with faith, when he builds your faith, he can do, say it with me, so much more. 
Thank you for watching and tuning in. If you've been impacted today, we wanna to invite you to do three things. Number one, create a space for yourself by joining the BC community, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and being with us every weekend. Number two, create a space for those you're connected to. Share this message with your family or your friends, with your coworkers or anyone that you know might benefit from this. And number three, create space by praying about partnering with us by giving and journeying alongside us as we continue to create space for the people God misses most. If this is something you would like to do, go ahead and click on the giving link in the description below. And know that as a Brook Church, we are continuing to create spaces for the people God misses the most by sharing the good news of Jesus to those who are far from God, not just in Bolingbroke or Chicagoland, but all around the world. And we wanna thank you in advance for partnering with us. God bless.